listen we know that tax paying we are paying tax is for a lot of things it cover a lot of things but the fact that you can see it that your money is going out and you work a certain amount and the tax money that they take is a lot it's annoying so we find it annoying that we had to pay that crazy amount of tax when we don't even have that much in our pocket hey guys welcome back to my channel today i'm going to do a reaction to something i haven't done before it's actually my first time actually doing something like this because i'm actually interested in anything it's one thing that i have been like it piqued my interest and i wanted to know and explain things at the same time as they talk about so i hope you guys enjoy this this reaction is going to be about an american react to the nhs healthcare so this is going to be how the you know United Kingdom healthcare system work. So this is going to be an American reaction to it and I'm from the UK so let's see what I think of what he's saying. So as I say it's going to be an interesting one. Let's get started with this. And to let you guys know I will be answering it when he's talking so if you find it like it's weird for me to talk over him I will stop here and there but sometime I will talk um when he's talking what's going on guys my name is steve thank you for stopping by my channel i'm just an american guy on a journey to discover my british and irish ancestry today we're going to be reacting to how the united kingdom's healthcare system works i understand that the uk has a universal health care system called the nhs yeah i believe that stands for national health service if i'm not mistaken but yes. beyond that i really don't know the ins and outs of how the nhs operates for example i understand that taxpayers ultimately pay the cost for the nhs but yeah. does every single taxpayer across the board pay the same amount no or is it based off a percentage of income yes. and also do lower income people pay into the nhs no or does do you only start paying in once you hit a certain income bracket yes <laughs> and also i'm wondering things like do you have co-pays when you go to certain medical procedures and also does the yeah. nhs cover every single medical procedure you would ever want for example could you go get cosmetic surgery or no. is it more for kind of emergency purposes and things yes. like that um I'm also curious, is dentistry actually included in the NHS? Because that would be really interesting because we generally don't have dental stuff covered with health insurance. Here. Okay, with that, it's a little bit complicated because there's a different type of, like, when it comes to dental, it's different. There's, like, age, it comes to play around. Like, if you have a certain medical problem or you have a certain medical, like, need or stuff like that, and you have an age you reach a certain age the health care will actually make it free i think it's when you reach like in your 60s or something like that it will make it free but apart from that you will actually pay for your dental because that will be in the private section because it's different than actually the nhs one because the nhs one is run by the nhs and then the private one is the one that you had to go out there and register with it, even though they're, they're all under the bracket of NHS, but it's kind of like private because you pay for those services. And when it comes to like plastic surgery and all that kind of stuff, you pay for it because it's also private because that has nothing to do with health. So that also is separate. So it's different. With the NHS, you more to do with health. Like if there's an emergency health situation that happened, you have an accident and you need operation or this kind of stuff, the NHS will cover you for that. Here, you have to actually purchase separate dental insurance and generally the dental insurance is absolutely horrible it doesn't really cover anything uh, you so there's really not much point in, in that. dental insurance for oh, the most part can't. but um, sure. obviously the universal health care system in the uk is quite different from anything i've ever experienced i live in america where we have where we all basically have to get private health insurance except yeah. if you're on medicaid or medicare which is usually, you know, if you're after retirement age, you generally get some form of health care provided, but it's generally lacking in a lot of ways. And a lot of people purchase supplemental health insurance when they get older as well. And people okay. that are either that are really poor or the low income spectrum generally have their health, their health insurance provided to them by the government for free or at a very, oh, very low cost. I didn't know that. Um, but overall, the two systems, I understand they're completely different. And totally. so... I kind of want to better understand what 
you know, what the UK's NHS system looks like. So let's go ahead and check out how the United Kingdom's All right. healthcare system works. Let's see works. what you think of it. Super Tuesday came and went, and the Democratic presidential race is narrowing to two very different candidates. Far left Bernie Sanders and the more That's moderate American. Joe Biden. Biden and Sanders have clashed on the best approach to reforming U.S. health care. Sanders wants to get rid of private insurance altogether, while Biden proposes building on the framework left over from Barack Obama's Affordable Care Act. Bernie what says was it? that you have to bring people together and uh, we have to have Medicare for all. But Bernie says, and he says he wrote the damn thing. But he's unwilling to show us what the damn thing's going to cost. The idea middle class taxes aren't going to go up is, all, is just crazy. What Medicare for all will do is save the average American substantial sums of money. The U.S. already oh. spends more money on health care than any other developed country. Oh, I wanted to see that real quick. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, we've been more than any other developed country. U.K. kind of right here in the middle. <laughs> Yeah. Mexico doesn't spend hardly anything. I wonder how I wonder how Mexico spends so little in their health health coverage. Sure. I understand you can go to Mexico and get pretty good health coverage for uh, health care for really cheap, honestly. Uh, same as Thailand, but I, you know I don't think they consider Thailand. Uh, what's uh, Japanese? Thailand okay, what's Japanese in this? What Japanese spend more than us? France as well? Wow. I didn't know that. I thought Japanese would be more like lower than the UK, but they actually spend more than the UK. But the Japanese healthcare is actually cool. It's amazing. I love Japanese healthcare to be t to true. Even though I don't know much about it. Developed country, I don't think it is. Uh, but it's not quite third world either. But um, So anyway, but we're talking about the UK. UK is 4K per capita. We're at, what's that, 11 roughly? <laughs> Any other developed country. There's one country that spends less than half what the US does on healthcare. And people generally don't pay anything out of pocket when they go to the doctor mm. the united kingdom and yep. out of all the healthcare systems we've looked at the uk appears the most socialist the government effectively runs the whole thing right now the uk is having its own debate over how to reform the national health <laughs> service so how does the uk system yeah this is something that if it happened the whole country would riot like literally the whole country will riot some people want to go private meaning that they want to get rid of the tax that's going to the healthcare because with the with i mean with the uk health case is it have its good side and you have the bad the good one is that you get to anything you can go for free except for paying for the prescription they give you like medicine and all that kind of stuff which is free i love it it's nice i don't have any problem with it the downside of it is that there's not enough staff to take care of people and even though the staff that they have they're not pay well so they're complaining if they're not doing the job properly because they're not being paid well and there's less um, people to like work meaning that they have more work to do which weigh on them and then the patient what they don't is like they take long sometimes they wait um the wait time is long as well or sometimes they literally the gp or the doctor or the nurse they see don't actually tell them why they're sick and it make a thing hard for them to identify like you're going to a gp a gp is kind of i don't know how to say it but it's kind of like you're going to talk to a doctor before I should go to the hospital because I don't want everyone to go to the hospital because they're sick. You need to speak with someone to see what's the problem. If you can, they can help you with that before I actually reach it to the hospital. So the GP will, if you go to GP, say you have a migraine and stuff like that, they will normally will say, "Oh, take this and then maybe we'll go away." But what we want is actually a diagnose of what is causing the problem to begin with and they're not technically helping do with that so that's the where the stress come from when it comes to their healthcare for me but i don't know about other people but i haven't really been sick like drastic that i would need to go to the hospital that's a good thing because i haven't really experienced it even though i've been in this country for almost like 14 years since i've been in this country and i I've been to the hospital once and it wasn't like an emergency well it was an emergency because there was an emergency situation but it didn't last a day i went they check and they think um 
food and everything and then it wasn't actually big so I had to go back home but there's good and bad side when it comes to it it depends how you see it because we live in this system already we are going to nitpick at literally everything compared to people that don't actually live in that system if that makes sense and compared to the US and what reforms may be coming yeah. In 2018, the United States spent around 10,500 US dollars on health care for each of its residents. The That's United crazy. Kingdom spent around 4,000 US dollars. The crazy thing is, how is that happening? Like, I mean, because I don't think they necessarily are meaning that every individual, because I don't think every individual in the UK is paying $4,000. So this is no. obviously what, what is total spent per person on health care across the board in the US and the UK. That's insane, look at that difference. That means the United Kingdom spends 9.8% of its GDP on healthcare while the US spends 16.9%. Despite spending Crazy. less, the United Kingdom manages to have healthier citizens who live longer and are less likely to die in childbirth. In 2017, life expectancy in the UK was 2.7 years higher than in the US. And the wow. UK has roughly 1.5 times fewer deaths that could have been avoided by access to better healthcare. The infant mortality rate is lower in the United Kingdom with 3.9 deaths per 1,000 live births as opposed to 5.8 in the United it's States. It's still high though. And the maternal mortality rate in the U.S. is nearly 1.5 times higher than in the United Kingdom. So how is the U.K. system structured so that it gets these results while spending significantly less than the United States system? National Health Service, okay. The National Health Service is a case where the British decided right after World War II that health care should be government's job, like paving the streets, putting out fires, running the library, running the parks. That's T.R. Reed, author of the book The Healing of America. He traveled the world exploring different countries' health care systems. Ooh. It's a service you get when you need it, and you never get a bill. It's like going to the library. They don't charge you to check out a book. He's That's... That's so interesting to me. Like, you literally can go to the hospital and you never even have to think about getting a bill. Yep. I mean, is that literally accurate? Yep. I mean, I think it, I think it for the most part is, but that's, is that literally accurate across the board no matter what? Yeah. Like, you can go to the hospital for any reason, go to the doctor for any reason, and, like, you never have to worry about getting a bill. Okay, wait. There's, that's what I'm saying. There's um, a GP system for it. Because before we actually reach the hospital, we technically go to the GP. That's the first thing you think of when you think about, like, you're sick. You always go to the GP. The GP always comes first before the hospital. The hospital is more for a situation where there's issue that the GP haven't been helping you getting that like for example like i said about the migraine when you have a migraine and then you go to the gp and then they're not able to tell you a diagnosis for that you reach the point where it was like okay i need to speak to an actual doctor so you go to the hospital and that'll be like for a and e so it's kind of like emergency service i think i don't know I, I, listen, I don't go to the hospital much, but you go to a &E where uh, it's like for emergency situation where you go there and then you say there's a situation happening, I need to speak to a doctor, this is urgent, or there's an accident that happened and I need to see a doctor, or this type of thing, that's an emergency situation, that's why you need to your hospital. If it's like you have a cold in the morning and you don't feel well and you want to see a doctor to help you prescribe the correct like medicine for you to take to get better you go to speak with a gp pretty much and you also never literally have to go and pay a uh a health insurance bill each month either we don't have health insurance bill unless you're going private we don't pay for health insurance unless you know you're traveling to be more precise you only pay half much when you're traveling but in the uk if you're going to live in the uk for like forever you don't have to pay for health insurance and plus you do have to pay for um, medicine that's the different medicine you have to pay but you have a certain age as well so it's like when you're young to a certain i think 16 or 18 i can't remember but the bills for those medicine are free and when you, I think it's 16 or 18, when that happened, you can pay for the 
medical i mean the prescription so meaning that if you're going to a uh, eye test uh, dental when you are young to that you don't pay for it but when you become like adult or something like that consider you adult when you start working so you're 16 um, you pay for it um, but rarely you need a lot of things so it's you don't feel it unless you're one of those people that get sick very easily and a lot that's when you feel all the things but if you're not sick a lot you don't really feel it that's so crazy, man. I can't even imagine that. I mean, that's that's how that's how different our systems are. I can't even imagine that experience. It would feel surreal to be able to go to the you know the doctors and not even have to think about what it's going to cost. Yeah. The thing about the NHS is it's a risk sharing system, so everyone pays into it through their right. tax. Right. If you need to use it, you don't have to pay anything else. So. Uh, in a sense, it's not free because it's right. paid out of taxation. Um, and that's something I want to clarify. I, I, you know, I, I did a couple of those videos where, uh, you know, British people were reacting to the cost of American health care services and stuff. And when I was talking about it, people seemed to assume that I thought that it was free. And no, I, I, I know there's nothing free. If you're, yeah, if you're getting some sort of service from the government or something, it's coming out of taxes. That's 100% fact. You can't pay for it otherwise. Um, but what what it is is that because it's taken out of your system, it's almost I mean, out of your check or out of your income. It almost seems like it's free. <laughs> at the end of the year, if you own a business, you pay it towards your taxes. Um, it's just like... It's just like... It feels like the federal tax, I'm guessing. You know, federal income tax almost is how it feels because... It's just an automatic thing, basically. So it's not free, but you don't feel the the pain of having to shell out that money at, at a All time you do. need health health a health service. Um, so that's just All really we do. it's just such a different dynamic. Can't imagine it. Listen, we know that tax paying we are paying tax is for a lot of things. It covers a lot of things, but the fact that you can see it that your money is going out and you work a certain amount and the tax money that they take is a lot it's annoying so we find it annoying that we had to pay that crazy amount of tax when we don't even have that much in our pocket and to make matter worse when the price of living is increasing and your pay is not is even annoying it's like frustrating that's where we Oh, like if there was a proper system that would say, okay, the price are going up, your pays are also going up, we would not complain much, but it's not going up. It's the price of things are going up and expensive, but our pay are small, and then they're taking tax the same quantity, even more than what you actually have. Is annoying. Dr. John Puntis is a pediatrician who recently retired from the NHS. He is also co-chair of an organization called Keep Our NHS Public. All of his comments are reflective of the organization and not his personal views. It's a, a fair system in that uh, the more money you earn, the more tax you pay uh, and the more oh. you um, contribute. But there has been discussion about whether tax should be increase to pay for sorting the NHS out in terms of the current deficiencies and problems mm. and that that is <gasps> controversial I think a yes. lot of people favor some tax increase but then there are other people who say well maybe the focus should be on companies that don't pay tax and people that aren't paying tax as the first step so what do you guys pay to your like to the nhs can you see it on your check or if you have oh a business, yes we do can you automatically know what you need to add no 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 to pay no. towards to the federal government or the nhs specific okay so tax is a little bit complicated if you want to talk about it because the way that it is is kind of like for example if you work before it used to be like if you work for 40 hours or was it 30 now if you work for 30 hours i think when i was younger it was much more it was like for 40 hours you don't pay tax 
it went down to 30 hours you don't pay tax and then i think he went even down to i think less than 20 hours like if you work the tax is by hours so if you work a certain amount of ta um, hours you you don't pay tax but if you work more than that threshold you pay tax and the tax is by is like this percentage and you were deducted before it even reach your account meaning that the pay that you, the company you work for will pay you go to the government which will take the deduction of the tax before it reach your account that's how it is so you can't even stop it if you want to he goes straight to the government, vetted the tax, and then the money come back to you. And on your pay slip, you can actually see it in your face saying, okay, we took this from tax. And plus, it's not only tax we will pay, we pay N9 as well. Meaning that for, uh, we pay two type of taxes. So you pay N9 and you pay your tax, and that's, annoying because you see both of them taken out so if you work for let's just say 30 30 37 hours you can pay up to 30 pounds that's a week let's just say a week you will pay like 30 pounds a week for tax and another like 20 pound for things so you have to take into consideration consideration how much you earn and how much tax so you earn more you pay more tax you earn less you earn less tax so people going around it differently and if you work more than one job you pay more tax so it's crazy how it is but at the same time you have to get used to it typically i'm just curious what is that percentage is it is it three percent five percent ten percent um, it sounds like I, the percentage is the know. same for everyone. No it's not the how same. Much or little income you're making is that accurate? No, it's not the same. It's different. We call that socialized medicine. Government provides the care. Government pays for the care. It's paid for through taxes. Everybody's covered the same. To me, that sounds like socialized medicine. The term socialized medicine has become a political football, especially in the United States. If the NHS is that socialized medicine, it's great. And we, we hear this term mainly coming from the US where it's used as a uh, as um, for scaremongering. I would say <laughs> uh, if the NHS is socialized medicine, uh, we like it. And most people are still very, very supportive of the concept of a, of, a, of a national health service. Each of well, what I would like to add to that is that it doesn't really matter what you call it. It matters do the people that are experiencing the system, do they feel like they benefit from it? Uh, it doesn't matter Ooh, what anybody anywhere that's in the world different. calls it. It depends on people. It hasn't been a net positive for the people that are experiencing it. And all, obviously, I, on the other side, over here in America, there's no way I can judge it one way or the other because I haven't experienced what it's like. All I can do is trust the people that, uh, you know, that comment on this video, perhaps, and, you know, other videos that tell me, you know, they're living in that system. How's it work for you? Have you enjoyed? Okay, this is where there's going to be a lot of debate because people how would i say this it's different for people in my opinion i think i don't see a problem with the system itself like i don't see why we can't pay for people to get off um healthy and stuff like that the problem i do see in it is the fact is i pay a lot of it when i know that i don't use it like there's like a controversy on what i'm saying because it's kind of like I want the system to be there because of I don't know if I will ever have an emergency where I need someone or the hospital need to take care of me or something like that but because the system is there I don't worry about like my health as much because I know I don't have to worry about it it's covered but because of that it led me to think that I don't even get sick anyway so why do i need to pay all of that for that when i'm not going to be like use it so that kind of mentality that's the problem with this 
because we know for a fact that if there's an emergency there's a hospital that will take care of us and we don't have to pay for anything but because we don't get sick because that system is there to begin with we always complain because we don't use it <laughs> so it's like i want this candy to be there but i don't want it other people to take it because i'm not using it so it's let's just say i have this candy that i love that is there but i can't use it yet i can't eat it yet because it's not the right time but i don't want other people to eat my candy <laughs> so, why am i paying for that candy that he's going to eat it before me so that kind of it's crazy that's a crazy way of thinking but i actually like the nhs system i just don't want to pay money for it <laughs> that's the thing <gasps> has it you know has it been a net benefit for you um that's the type of uh that's all i need to know you know I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna listen to someone that lives in america that's never experienced this, this type of system try to tell me one way or the other if it's good or bad i will want to hear directly from the people who are actually experiencing it and so i'm kind of curious guys um for everybody who's in the uk under this system what do you think about it? Has it been a net positive or a net negative for you? Has service been excellent? It's or positive, it been but we have negative feeling about it. Do you feel the amount of money you're paying into that system, uh, do you feel like you get out of it, uh, you know, what you should for the money? The UK's four constituent countries have their own branch of the NHS, so rules differ slightly. Oh, between, every okay, I didn't all know that. The branches operate under the purview of the UK Parliament. There are some services that require patients to pay something out of pocket, such as dental, eye care, uh, and certain oh, prescription okay. drugs. But those fees are low compared to the US and vary yep. by NHS like branch. Say, by one dental. estimate from a data analytics firm, prescription drugs I've heard cost fifty-seven percent less in the UK. So rules differ slightly. Oh, between, every okay, I didn't know that. The branches operate under the purview of the UK Parliament. There are some yep. services that require patients to pay something out of pocket, such as dental, eye care, uh, and like certain I said. prescription okay. drugs. But those fees are low compared to the US and vary by NHS branch. By one estimate from a data analytics firm, prescription drugs cost 57% less in the UK Not than the UK. Unlike with other universal healthcare systems that are only publicly funded, the government also runs the NHS. That means doctors that work in public and NHS facilities are employees of the government. Most Britons oh. receive their primary care through general practitioners who are frequently referred to as GPs. GP. They typically act as gatekeepers for secondary care. The problems that people are experiencing at the moment is it's taking longer to see your general practitioner uh, if you want to see them. Most GPs are private contractors with the NHS. They don't charge patients for care. Instead, they earn money directly from the National Health Service. Many GPs negotiate contracts with the NHS to determine how much they can charge the government for their services. GPs may fund their own general practice facilities, or they can rent them from the NHS or private companies. One paper from the Journal of the Royal Society of Medicine found that GPs face many issues because of how general practices are funded in the UK. Okay. Some GPs, uh, I think increasingly, don't want to take on the running a business aspect of general practice. And yeah. so the, the, there are lots of GPs who are uh, salaried partners, so they, they are paid by the practice to come in and work as a GP, but they don't do any of the business side of the stuff. There's also a private sector in the UK's healthcare system. It's funded from a combination of out-of-pocket payments, private health insurance, and the NHS itself. The, the private sector is growing because it's being consciously promoted uh, by government and the, the boundaries being blurred. Well, I think that private healthcare has been growing at, at a very uh, rapid, steady pace. This is, this is part of what I'm really trying to wrap my head around. If everyone can literally go use the NHS services for, for, for basically no cost out of pocket, you, you're, pay, you're already paying for that service in your taxes, why then would people choose to go and pay out of pocket for a private doctor or something like that? Is there... Okay. The reason why I think people will go for private, like I say, the GP or the one causing all of that. Because the NHS is like 
not if it's not enough people and it's not funded correctly like they don't get paid enough for all of that it play a role in the gp um problem because when we go to the gp and then we say there's this situation is happening i'm sick i have a problem with this tell me what's wrong with it they would not know what's wrong with you you had to self-diagnose what's wrong with yourself to find out what medicine is working for you so plus the line is long like you had to wait for like i don't know how many days if you book sometimes it's fast depending on which gp you go to for me i tend to have my gp is actually very fast when it comes to booking like i choose a day i book my hours and i'm there i'm done most of the time when you go to see them it's not actually a doctor you see sometimes you see a nurse so they don't even know what the sickness is they will probably session on the desktop like the same time saying i think they may have a database or something they will tell me okay maybe you take this medicine it will go and that will not work so the fact is they are not relating accurate um uh, sickness to us play a massive role of why we don't we don't trust what the gp are saying to us so we want to go to the actual hospital but to go to the hospital you need to know like what's the emergency because they will always send you back to a gp so going to a private one which we know may give you the correct diagnosis they may as well pay for it that's the dilemma when it comes to it what um i think the government don't understand is that when the people that are supposed to give you information and help you get better or not giving you that information or they keep saying that go do some blood tests go do some blood tests and then you don't give you the correct diagnosis some people get enough like it reached the point where it's like why are you guys not doing your job <laughs> like so that's when we sign blaming the nurses instead of the company and there's a lot of like protests with nurses because they're not getting paid enough for all of that <sighs> And that's where people are going to private than actually the NHS because we see they're taking that crazy amount of money from our pay check and we're not getting the career diagnosis for our sickness. Why would you want to continue that? That's where the dilemma is. But I want the system to work. I just want the people run it to fix it. <sighs> okay, cool. Let's continue. Is there some benefit from it? I know that he talked about, you know, there's increased wait times, which is something that, you know, that is a talking point that you hear in America about Canada, about the UK, about Australia, about other uh, countries that have similar health services, I believe. But anyway, you hear that the that the wait time to get certain services is, is much longer. And uh, is that one of the benefits of using uh, private... Uh, a private doctor or private insurance or whatever in the UK? I can't comment on that because I haven't been private. In the United Kingdom for the course of well, several decades, that's going to uh, continue. That's Niall Gardner. He's the director of the Thatcher Center for Freedom at the Heritage Foundation. With regard to the National Health Service, I mean, there's no, there's no sign at this stage that the UK will be moving to uh, a different system to the National Health Service. All British uh, parties are committed to the National Health Service. I think that uh, more and more Britons will be opting for private health care in the coming years and, and decades, not least because there are long waiting lists with regard to the National Health Service. An analysis uh, from the London School of Economics found that in the 2018 to 2019 fiscal year, NHS England spent around 18% of its total expenditure on the independent sector. There's been a blurring of the boundaries, if you like. For example, cataract surgery, which is the most common operation done under the NHS, increasingly really? it's it's being provided in the independent sector and the NHS is, uh, has contracts with the independent sector to do that work. There are... Why would cataract surgery be... Th that's kind of interesting. I thought it would have been, I don't know, something related to some sort of heart disease or cancer or something like that. No. Cataract surgery, surgery is the number one surgery provided by the NHS. It's interesting. 
implications in terms of staffing. Private sector doesn't train its own staff. It takes it from the NHS. It cherry picks, takes the uh, low risk patients, not the high risk patients. It has an impact on training NHS staff. And this is one of the problems with cataract surgery. If they're all going to the private sector hospitals, then the NHS staff don't become experienced in doing cataract surgery. And then along the line, you find it's more difficult to staff your NHS unit. So it's not without negative consequences. We are paying private companies increasingly to do work for the NHS, including American companies. And they're very well established now, particularly in uh, back office functions and providing advice on uh, commissioning support, this kind of thing. Uh, they're very involved. Uh, and unfortunately, that's likely to increase. And it's something which campaigners um, are extremely uh, worried about. I don't think anyone really believed that UK voters would decide to Brexit. The news that the United Kingdom voted to leave the European Union. Okay guys, so this is going to be a two-part series because um, it's long and I feel like we may go over the top. So this is going to be... So I'm going to end it here and I will see you guys on the next video because I'm going to continue. So let's see you guys on the next video. Uh. <laughs> I'm joking. Bye, guys.